Hi. Yesterday, my friend uh, Andrea, he, he was proposing the, the, the following interesting problem. Uh, this, what you see here, this is the surface uh, average daily temperature, day temperature of Mars. So this is over five years time, the animation and this shifts north and south. They are simply the seasonal effects similar to what you see on Earth. You see temperatures sometimes reach above zero Celsius and uh, in the surface, but this is, as I say, during the day. Now, uh, these seasonal effects, uh, this temperature distribution, much colder in the north and south uh, pole than on, on the equator, this, uh, of course, is re relevant in order to uh, predict what the temperature at depth is. And the, the distribution of temperature with depth uh, in Mars is very relevant, of course, to know at what depths should we expect having liquid water that could in turn host um, a habitat for life, like hosting maybe um, archaea or similar uh, uh, life uh, species that uh, could uh, be responsible for the methane that has been detected on Mars in uh, recent uh, missions. Um, so uh, everything is controlled by temperature and therefore this uh, latitude in principle seems like a relevant uh, parameter because simply the equator as on Earth is warmer than on, on, um, on the, uh, the poles. Uh, however, the um, obliquity of the axis of rotation of Mars relative to the translation around the, the Sun this is much more vari variable than on Earth and therefore the question that we were putting ourselves was uh, if this obliquity is changing so much um, maybe if the cyclicity of that obliquity is, uh, is uh, rapid enough the effects of latitude will not be noticeable at the enough uh, when you are deep enough in the crust because it has been already filtered by the time scales of heat wave propagation into the crust. So that was the question. Do we have to care about latitude or not? Um, then to tackle this, what we did is we, uh, we were using um, GPT-4 and uh, we were having this interesting conversation that I would like to share with you. And uh, I just put the, the problem straightforward to GPT and I said, uh, listen, I would like to understand the timescales of temperature propagation from the surface into the Earth's crust. Uh, so, uh, given an initial distribution of temperature with depth, uh, please provide a differential equation to calculate the transient temperature variations at any depth. And also give me a reference for that equation. And it uh, answered very correctly, very precise. The transient, transient heat equation conduction uh, on Earth crust is uh, often approximated by the one-dimensional heat equation, blah, blah. So here you have the equation. This is the diffusivity. It defines very well all the terms. Um, so it has actually learned very well anything about um, heat diffusion. And it also gives not just one, but actually two very appropriate um, references where you could uh, that you could cite or you could um, uh, look at for more details on this question. Then um, I went further and I said, okay, please then code that equation for me and plot vertical profiles of temperature for different times, starting from a linear constant temperature gradient and imposing a cyclical temperature at the surface, at the top of, the, of this uh, crust um, vertical profiles. 
and it produced this uh, nice code you have here in Python. So if you want to uh, have a look, it essentially it's defining a few parameters, most uh, relevant, uh, the alpha, the thermal diffusivity in 1 e minus 6 uh, square meters per second. That's a typical value for Earth. It's also valid for Mars, even if uh, I still did not mention Mars in this to GPT, so in principle it doesn't know that I'm, I'm thinking of, of Mars. Let's assume. And, um, and then the rest is essentially this loop. This is the time loop where um, the temperatures are defined at the surface with this sinusoidal uh, function of time. And here is where you have another uh, loop to actually solve or apply the diffusion using a second derivative um, discretization in finite difference. Um, that's all the way uh, GPT decided to, to solve the, the, the equation you saw above. We can actually show what the, this is doing mm, by uh, pasting this code into um, Colab, Google's Colab, where you can actually run this code. And this is the result. And you get these uh, weird, maybe instabilities, I'm not very sure. But anyway, my next uh, comment was complaining about the depth. Uh, I would like this to extend further deep to the depths where I know we should expect uh, temperatures closer to zero Celsius. So, uh, and also the variations at the top, he just made them up. I don't even remember what what is the amplitude um, he used but um, so my next uh, comment was um, saying please extend uh, well he gave all type of, of technical details of what you should install in case you are not using this collab thing then you might install some libraries all right then uh, i said look um, extend this calculation down, down to six kilometers deep and use the periods corresponding to the main period of orbital obliquity changes in Mars. And this is where, and then the answer was again very precise. Oh, Mars has a longer and much more variable cycle of obliquity than Earth. Its obliquity has oscillations with a period of 120,000 years. And blah, 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 blah. so he is just changing all this to the code and let's see what the new code is, um, is calculating so here you see uh, this is the initial gradient that i was asking and each of these curves is for a different time so you say the temperature is moving up in the surface is forced to move up and then move down and that's how this propagates down into the ground of mars using that diffusivity i was mentioning before so this this looks much nicer this is now six kilometers deep it's just the temperatures do not make sense because i still did not tell him tell a GPT that uh, we are thinking of Mars and then he should uh, adapt this temperature. So let's, this is what I did next here. Um, for the initial temperature, please use the average surface temperature and the thermal gradient in Mars. For the amplitude of the oscillation, use half of the difference between polar and equatorial temperatures in Mars. And he did very correctly again, so he apparently knows better than me uh, what is the average uh, surface temperature on Mars, which is about 60, minus 63 Celsius. Um, Mars also has a thermal gradient of about uh, 15 degrees per kilometer. Um, and um, so he's going to apply all these in principle to, um, to the code. Let's see what comes out with these new values. So now temperature is increasing. Before it was decreasing. Uh, that was his uh, guess. 
before he knew we were talking about Mars. And now he uh, took this increasing gradient of uh, 15 degrees per kilometer, and the rest is very, uh, quite relatively unchanged. However, there is something weird here. You see the temperatures in the surface reach above zero, and they shouldn't, because these are meant to be average uh, temperatures over the year, not uh, over the day. So and you would not expect to have temperatures to be above above uh, zero or any close to, to zero on average over the entire, the entire year. So, um, so we have to correct this and the next comment I did was uh, hey, what is the, the, your average temperature for the equator based on? Because it seems a little bit too high to me. Oh, you are correct, he answers. I apologize for the oversight. The average daytime temp temperature at the equator of Mars is indeed closer to 20 degrees Celsius. So he apologizes, uh, changes the thing, and he still made another mistake that um, I will just skip because it's not so interesting. But in the end, what we uh, get is this nicer, nicer figure here. This one, you see now temperatures are always below zero in the surface, and uh, this is how they propagate. Okay, next thing I did is just changing color palette and another stuff. This is the last uh, <coughs> the last um, request I did. So let me show you the final figure. Oops. Uh, Sorry, I did not copy the, the code here. And uh, in this figure, I asked to plot the each vertical profile with a color palette based on the surface temperature. So in this way, you, the average surface temperature is in gray and it moves to red colors, which is the maximum. And then the surface temperature is forced to move down to the cooler uh, temperatures, which are beyond minus 120 Celsius. All right, so this is uh, kind of the, the, the final results. And, and what we see here, the interesting result in here, is that mm, at, uh, at three kilometers depth, this is when you get close to values that might be appropriate for finding liquid brines. These liquid, liquid brines, in principle, on, on Earth, they have uh, shown capable of hosting uh, archaea methanogenic life. So this is the, the green shaded area. This is what it's trying to, to convey. This, um, the idea that this is the area suitable for uh, hosting uh, life conditions. And what is interesting here is that this heat wave uh, is not actually reaching those depths, uh, meaning that the uh, oscillation of the axis um, of rotation relative to the sun, uh, that one um, is the, the, the changes in insulation due to that is not uh, making an effect or it's making a small effect at those three kilometers depth. And that indicates that uh, we should not worry about present day latitude, because present day latitude is not relevant for what the temperature regime is when you are at about three kilometers uh, depth. Therefore, uh, this is kind of a, a, a possible answer to, to the question that we were addressing, uh, we were trying to solve. And the comment I wanted to make about this is that, um, um, well, I don't know what, what you think, but uh, um, to me, this is, uh, this is pretty um, important, what, what, uh, what this new tool is, um, is putting on the table. Because note that in all the process that I have described, all this conversation with GPT, I um, 
I just have asked questions and, and I have just uh, put general ideas. Um, I, GPT actually did uh, give, gave the conceptual approach to it, said, okay, do it 1D, uh, use the diffusion equation, um, uh, solve it with finite difference, I will solve it for you, I will write the code, um, and uh, you just let me know the, how you want these figures and uh, I will make them for you. And uh, GPT is still not able to run the code itself, so they are, uh, they are not allowing doing that. That's why I'm using a separate, this uh, Collab Google tool to, to run the code, but you know, it, it could do it perfectly if he, when, it, when it will. When it will, it, it will know what uh, the results of their own, its own codes are. When it knows the results, uh, GPT will be able to make uh, its own conclusions out of the results. Uh, it will certainly be capable of explaining those results. Uh, and uh, I have the feeling that it will be capable of making conclusions out of them as well. And uh, probably writing a paper. And um, I think this is a, a game changer. We are facing here um, a, a huge, um, a, a huge shift in the way we will do science in the future, and um, I think we have to be ready for for this uh, new way of uh, of working and doing research that we are facing because um, because because huge shifts like this they they always bring good and, and bad and bad things and we we have to be ready for it that's all i wanted to say bye